make camp here. Storm be over soon. We better go on, huh? Do as you're told. We'll reach Peking soon enough. Something must have frightened you. Glad he didn't hurt you. Get on pack. Who sent you? Let me go. I'll tell. Well. <laughs> Why we wait so long, huh? Special inspection of some kind. Open up your coat. What have you got in that pouch? Oh, there are a few belongings, all mine. How long have you been with this caravan? Uh, oh, long, very long time, sir. He joined us at Changpei. Wasn't that near the place where Ning, the Mongolian, disappeared? Huh? Yes, sir. Take this one into the garden. What do I mean? Nothing can see on him, sir. Sorry to cause you all this trouble. That's all right, Mr. Snyder. We are more anxious to stop the smuggling of our treasure than you are. Wait. Let me see that.
Mr. Modo, not here. You go away. Pichera, Pichera. that I need it. When did letter come for you, sir? So I see. Did you miss me, John Keener? Very lonely for us while you're away. Wing, how long has it been since you've seen your family? Over three years. Also, suppose you had two weeks' leave of absence, a railroad ticket on a train tonight, and a little money to buy presents for your honorable parents. Would you go? Oh, Mr. Moto. Here, please. And the ticket will be in your name at the station. Thank you, Mr. Moto. Thank you. You're quite welcome, Mr. Wing. But when you return, I shall expect you to be more alert. Where are my clothes? Oh, oh, I'm so happy I forget everything. Happy I'm back, Chunkina. Did you miss me? Oh. My presence is requested at a garden party tonight. Garden parties are seldom given in peeping without a purpose, Chunkina. I wonder what Colonel Chernoff's purpose is. And this is Cavaliere Cacciatore of the Italian Legation. This is a big pleasure. Herr von Kirger. Delighted. And Monsieur Dupont, the French counselor. Mademoiselle, it's a pleasure to connect. Je vous remercie, monsieur. I believe I'm next in line, Colonel Turner. Oh, my dear, I should like to present a countryman of yours, Mr. Thomas Nelson of the American Legation. I am so glad with pleasure. I've been wanting to meet you, Miss Joyce, ever since I made an interesting discovery about you. What? Well, you see, I'm psychic. I've been in this country just long enough to soak up some of its uh, oriental mysticism. Now, last night, for instance, I went into a trance and... Uh, uh, shall we dance and I'll tell you all about it? Eva. Has Mr. Moto arrived yet? No, sir. Perhaps something has happened to delay him. Now, while you were in this trance, just what did you find out about me? Oh, that your father is Norton Joyce, the famous importer. How interesting. Go on. That you are five feet four inches tall, you weigh 114 pounds, and your age... Be careful. That you have lovely soft brown eyes, that your complexion is fair, and you have a mole on your... It isn't a mole, it's a freckle. Oh, but your passport definitely says it's a mole. Now, you don't want to make a liar out of your passport, do you? So that's your oriental magic. You've got my passport. Oh, but yes, madame. That's why you had to leave it at the embassy, so that I could return it to you in person. One look at your passport photo and I was cast in a spell. The girl of my dreams. Oh, give me that. <laughs> you see that hook on the end of your name? That means stubbornness. Give me that passport. You know, I think we'd better go over and sit down because what I have to tell you about your handwriting is going to take quite a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Moto, adventurer, explorer, soldier of fortune. One of the Orient's mysteries. Nobody knows very much about him, except that whenever he shows up, something usually happens. Sounds fascinating. I want to meet him. 
Most people do. Good evening, madame. Good evening. I'm so glad you could come, Mr. Moto. It was so very thoughtful of you to invite me. Not at all. Good night, dear Kurga, we get. Thank you, good. Colonel Chernoff, will you introduce Mr. Moto to the guest of honor? Of course. Miss Joyce, may I present Mr. Moto? Ikaga desu ka? Yoroshu gozaimasu, arigato. Anata wa nihongo o hanashimasu ka? I'm sorry, that's all I know. I picked that up by one day in Yokohama. Your accent is superb. You'll excuse us, won't you? It isn't often I have a chance to dance with my husband. Pardon. I have the honor to have met your father, Miss Joyce. He indeed is a true connoisseur of oriental art. Miss Joyce was telling me that she is here to pick up some antiques herself. She's writing a book on Chinese art. Also, it is impressive to find one so young and attractive with an appreciation for fine carvings, porcelains, and uh, scroll paintings. My father taught me what appreciation I have. It is wise to be extremely cautious, Miss Joyce. Why do you say that? Oh, deception is a fine art with dealers in oriental antiques. <laughs> That's right, I bought a jade Buddha once and it turned out to be soapstone. <laughs> My father gave me a pretty good detective course, but thanks for the advice. Quite helpful. May I have the honor of this dance? Why, yes. I've enjoyed meeting you, Mr. Moto. It was my pleasure, Mr. Joyce. Pardon? The next girl that wants to meet you can write you a letter. I have noticed that you were troubled with shyness, Mr. Tom. <laughs> Suppose you try cutting in. One meets every nationality in Peking, even Chinese. <laughs> For instance, there is Prince Zhong and his mother, Chinese nobility. She reminds me of pictures of the old Empress Dowager. She was lady-in-waiting to the Empress. Madame Zhong disapproves strongly of modern China and of foreigners. Thank you. Now, tomorrow we'll go shopping, and then after dinner we'll go to the Chen Quang. What's that? Movie theater. I and came the... here to write a book, remember? Oh, I will make it a trilogy, will you? Something it'll take us years to finish. <laughs> <laughs> I trust you are enjoying yourself, Madame Chung. I am being amused. My honorable mother seldom attends these functions. But perhaps I could offer you something to eat. Thank you. I have never learned to enjoy foreign dishes. When you find it convenient, will you come in the library for a few moments? I should like to confer with your son on a matter of importance. If you wish. Thank you. Madame? I knew there was a purpose behind this affair. He wants something of you, my son. Never fear, Mother. He will not get it. I will return soon. Cocktail, sir? No, thank you, but you may bring me a glass of milk, please. Please excuse me for mentioning such a delicate subject, but I should like to help you. You and your mother were once quite wealthy. A considerable contrast to your present position. It will perhaps save you time if I tell you at once that I have no intention of selling any of the treasures of the House of Chung. I am interested only in a few minor pieces. For example? Well, I might be able to offer a substantial sum for your set of scroll paintings. Those minor pieces are authentic paintings of the time of Kublai Khan. In that case, I could probably pay much more. You wish these for your own collection? No, I am buying them for a friend of mine. There are few enough treasures left in my country. Surely you understand. These scrolls have been handed down through 12 generations of my family. I could not part with them. The restoration of your fortune would mean a great deal to your mother. It must be hard for her to accustom herself to, forgive me, poverty. You are too proud. I respect your beliefs, but you are refusing a helping hand. I am sorry. I cannot sell. I'll pay you enough to make it worth your while, if that's what's worrying you. Among our people, social gatherings are not arranged for the purpose of transacting business deals. See here. I've got to have those scrolls. Either you will sell them to me, or I'll find other ways of getting them. You will never obtain them, Colonel Chernoff. The honor of my ancestors depends upon it. 
You are always talking about honor and ancestors. And still you sell anything if you get your price. That is a lie. I am certain you will regret these insults. Good evening. Wait! You are not leaving here. Not until you change your mind. I decided I wanted to see another corner of the world, so I managed to get sent here as a code clerk. Can you decode what I'm thinking about now? Something romantic, I hope. Wrong again. I was thinking I haven't been to Chile since I left California. Oh, I'll get you a wrap. Where do you keep them? You'd never find it. I'll be right there. I'll be right here. He's quite dead, I assure you. Most regrettable. What happened? Please understand that we must be discreet about this. Extremely discreet. What do you mean? They are representatives of a dozen nations outside in the garden. One injudicious word from either of us might provoke a very serious international incident. But Colonel Charles has been killed. We must tell someone, call the police, do something. Certainly, Miss Joyce, certainly. In due time. There's very little the police can do about uh, suicide. Oh, but it can't be suicide. The gun was in his hand. It is suicide, Miss Joyce. We call it Harakiri. He stabbed himself, as you can see. You know it's not suicide. It's murder. Of course it is murder, dear lady. But it would be difficult to prove it. Would it not? You honor my poor house by your presence, Mr. Moto. I regret that I was unable to thank you last night for saving my unworthy life. I'm extremely sorry that I was forced to employ such uh, severe measures. If I had entered the library a moment earlier, I might have disarmed him, but unfortunately for Colonel Chernoff, he was about to shoot you. Well, perhaps it was better that way. I wish that I could express my gratitude in more tangible form than words. You can, Your Highness. I am delighted. I should very much like to see the scrolls that Colonel Chernoff was so anxious to obtain. You honor me by your interest in my humble possessions. Please excuse me. One of my illustrious ancestors painted these scrolls centuries ago. He said that originally there were seven scrolls in the set. But as far as our family records go, there were only six. There is a legend that the seventh scroll is hidden in a lamasery in the Gobi Desert. I believe it is more than a legend. Oh, what harmony of line and color. This is truly a voiceless poem. I do not wonder that Colonel Chernoff wanted them so ardently. I'm afraid that the Colonel's interest was prompted by something beyond the love of art. Oh, so? My honorable father told me that these scrolls, placed in order, form a picture map 
indicating the location of a great treasure hidden in the tomb of Genghis Khan. Oh, but the tomb of Genghis Khan has never been discovered, Your Highness. The ancient chronicles say that he is buried in a forest near the edge of the Gobi Desert. These paintings are supposed to indicate the location of the burial place and the lost treasure. I'm so very happy to hear this corroboration from your own lips. You have also heard the legend? Well, that's why I'm in Peiping. I was sent here to learn whether such a treasure exists, and if it does, to take the necessary steps to recover it. Your family, of course, would benefit greatly should I succeed. This is a great surprise to me, Mr. Moto. My family has no desire to desecrate the tomb of the great Khan. Oh, I'm so sorry, Your Highness, but my mission has been clearly defined. Oh, this bridge on the first scroll seems familiar. It is still in existence, the Marco Polo Bridge, only a short distance from here. Oh, of course. <laughs> and the second showing the... Sampan sailing into the setting sun undoubtedly means that the first stage of the journey is westwards from Peiping, up the Hang Ho River. That is the traditional explanation. I leave blank this space where the third of the series should be. Its principal decoration was a peculiarly shaped pagoda which would... Respectful greetings, Honorable Mother. Your Highness. Oh, showing Mr. Moto our poor treasures. Have you forgotten they are not to be looked upon by strangers? Mr. Moto is hardly a stranger. That may be. But as long as they remain in our vault, their secret is safe. Return the scrolls to the vault. My worthy mother does not understand the service you have done me. Your honorable mother is quite right. I should never have presumed upon your friendship. Please, your highness, forgive my ill-bred eagerness. On our ancestral tablets is engraved the oath of our family. Honor above wealth, tradition above self. If you have come to buy the Cheung Yon scrolls, you have failed. I would not offend you by offering to buy them. For over 600 years, men have been seeking the tomb of Genghis Khan to despoil it. That is why so many people want our scrolls, and that is why we will never part with them. I regret that I have to appear impolite with you, but already we have lost one of the set. I understand, Your Highness. May I ask what happened to the missing scroll? A short time ago, the museum requested the loan of one as an example of the Yon Dynasty art. Against my better judgment, I consented. The second day of the exhibition, it disappeared. You made attempts to recover it, however. We offered as large a reward as our circumstances permitted, but to no avail. Our only response was from a foreign barbarian, a dealer in doubtful antiques, who pretended he had made a mistake as soon as he discovered we were the rightful owners. It would appear that my task is slightly more complicated than I thought. Miss Joyce is in the library, sir. Not only is this genuine Quan Yin of Tang Dynasty, but it is very authentic. Hello. Not ready? Oh, come on in, Tom. Madam Chair, not feeling any better? Yes, thanks. I was just looking at some antiques this gentleman brought to show me. I sell only genuine objects of art, Sin Ho. Observe these objects. Genuine Buddha of Wei Dynasty. Ah, I see you appreciate fine work, Senorita. This is very old scroll painting, exceedingly rare. Look, Tom, isn't it lovely? Very nice. Uh, what's it represent? Who can say, Senor? Art is long time dead. Observe the color, Senorita. As fresh as if they were painted yesterday. Yet, it is many hundred years old. How much are you asking for this? To you, I make very reasonable price. Two thousand dollar gold. That's Two thousand gold? <laughs> I show someone else. Maybe other people buy. You'll never get that price for it. Perhaps not. Two weeks ago, I sold Chinese painting for $10,000. I do not lie. You like this? Well, I'm more interested in the scroll. I'll give you $500 max for it. I would lose money, senorita. 
I go now. Maybe I come back. You must come to my shop sometime. I have very large collection. How do you manage to get a hold of those things? That I cannot tell, Sinon. I am an honest man. You ask anyone about Pereira. I am foremost antiquarian in Peking. Good day. Remember my address if you want genuine objects of art. I'd like to have had that scroll, but he wanted too much money for it. Oh, you can probably get it for a lot less. He was just trying to find out how much you wanted it. Funny part of it is, Father especially asked me to buy early Chinese scrolls. Well, let's get started then. I know where there's a whole street full of curio shops. Mm. Oh, we all want to see those three acrobats. Sure, stop here. One more. Get the crowd interested, and then they won't do their best trick until they're paid off. Money? No got you enough money, no catchy, no show. Yo, wait a minute. <laughs> you gave them enough for 40 tricks. They'll probably break their necks. Get my, get my. Han ha, han ha. That's no way to shop in this country. Let him come to you. You'd better always go shopping with me. That's one of my honorable intentions. Let's try across the street. Okay. Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Moto. Were you able to find any bargains? We're trying to decide what place to get gypped in. Oh, but certainly no one with Miss Joyce's training would purchase any soapstone jade Buddhas. Please don't let me detain you. I, too, have shopping to do. Sayonara. So long. Nice day. Come in, sir, look. <laughs> Mr. Pereira, see, senor, can I help you? I've heard that you possess some very unusual objects of art. My stock is quite large. I am especially interested in a scroll painting of the Yuan Dynasty. Such scrolls are rare and very expensive. Oh, I am prepared to pay well, should I find a certain one. It matches a rather famous set. I have a Chinese scroll, 13th century. Very fine. I show you. Excuse me one minute. Please. Mr. Moto just went to Pereira's shop. You play well, Saint Hall. There's nothing like the music of a samusine to make one recall cherry blossoms. See, Saint Hall. Observe this excellent example, early Chinese art. You like it? I make good price. Two thousand dollar gold. This isn't thirteenth century. Perhaps not, but it is very ancient. Yes, as ancient as... Uh... A month or so, the silk, though cleverly aged, is new and the paint is of inferior modern grade. But, Senor, that is impossible. You certainly did not intend to defraud me. Oh, no, 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 no. 
I am honest man. Ask anybody about Pereira. I buy from Cooley, who swear he steal from Temple. Many missing art treasures have been traced to your shop, Mr. Pereira. But this isn't one of them. Do not be angry, senor. I make a mistake. You made a mistake when you stole a real scroll. No. From the museum? No, no, no. Who paid you to steal it, Mr. Pereira? I cannot say. They will kill me. And I kill you right now if you don't tell me. Oh, I explain everything, St. Hall. I did obtain such scroll as you describe. I was well paid. By whom, Mr. Pereira? By... Answer quickly. By a man known as... Your premonition was correct, Mr. Pereira. You like your bike? Somebody shot the car out of Pereira's store. Gentlemen, this number one Jake Buddha, really fine. No, thank you, don't worry. What if anybody's hurt? Bring very really good luck, very really small price. You buy him for Miss, you know? No, go away. Missy, back with gentlemen, number one jade, first class. Please, we don't want it. You killed him. We were talking to him not half an hour ago. Price too big, maybe? You make your offer. Look, I told you I didn't want it, will you? Please go away. Barely A1 quality, field jade. You see? Cold like your icebox. Pardon, please. Did you wet in the shooting? No, we were across the street at the time in his shop. Oh, yeah, gentlemen and Missy, come by number one jade Buddha. Price $15 mix. Which I'll tell you soon, Keep out. Why don't you need Bukan Street? $15 too much, you pay $11, no? Keep out, keep out. You are American, sir? That's right, I'm with the legation. $10? Thank you. You would please excuse me, I must question others. You pay $3 max and number one Jay Buddha belong you. Oh, all right. There. Gentlemen, get your number one bargain. Come on, let's get out of here. Drink your coffee and we'll go see a movie. Would you mind if I just asked you to take me home instead? Well, there's nothing like a murder to ruin a perfectly good evening. I'm sorry to be such a killjoy, but... After all, that's the second death I've seen since I've been here. I wonder why that antique dealer was killed. We haven't found any motive yet. By the way, where was Mr. Moto when that shooting occurred? He went across the street to Pereira's shop right after he left us, didn't he? Yes, that's what I've been wondering. Tom, there's something I've got to tell you. Colonel Chernoff didn't kill himself. What? I mean, it's a little difficult to believe he did. The circumstances were so strange. Darling, you just upset it. It, it couldn't have been anything but suicide. His hand was grasping the knife when you found him. Wasn't it? Good evening. Hello, Mr. Moto. Please sit down. I was so happy to hear that an official verdict of suicide has been returned in the death of Colonel Chernoff. It would have spoiled Miss Joyce's visit if she had been subjected to much unnecessary questioning. I'm sure I could have answered satisfactorily. One can never predict what the police will consider satisfactory. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to do. Good evening, Miss Joyce. So long, Mr. Tom. So long, Mr. Moto. Good night. You know, he's right at that. They could have bothered you with a lot of questioning. Please, Tom, take me home. Well, sure. Check, please. May I have my key, please? Mm -hmm. Here you are, Mr. Model. Thank you very much. May I speak with the manager, please? 
Hello. This is Mr. Moto speaking in room 303. I have recently discharged my number one boy and he has repaid me by trying to rob me. Pardon? No, nothing serious, but I have a very valuable art treasure here that I should like to leave in your safe from now on. Yes, I shall be down with it directly. Thank you very much. Stay where you are. Who are you? Never mind who I am. Hand me that scroll and keep your mouth shut. Now get over there. One, not one, Kaifan. You wait here. Savvy? Me savvy. Me, you too. I, uh... Good night, and thanks for everything. Don't go yet. There's something on your mind, Eleanor. I know it's got something to do with those scrolls. What is it? Mm, nothing really, Tom. I guess I'm just nervous over Colonel Chernoff's suicide. Well, look, let me come in for a while, will you? I, I don't like to leave you alone like this. Oh, I shan't be alone. Madame Chernoff is here, and they're the servants. Well, all right. I'm still worried about you. Good night. I'll phone you when I get in to make sure you're all right. Good night. Good night. Men Kofu. Sir. Madame Chernov retired rather early. She's still suffering from the shock. May I get you something, mademoiselle? Oh, no, thank you, Ivan. I'll find a book and read myself to sleep. Give me 24521, please. Hello? Yes, darling, I have it. Schnard is waiting outside. We'll meet you there in 10 minutes.
Good evening, Miss Joyce. Please don't be alarmed. I'm only attempting to break into the safe. If you're trying to steal that scroll, you needn't bother. Madame Chernoff took it away. Oh, so? It's most unfortunate for me. And for you, too. Why include me? Because you, like myself, are interested in scrolls. But I wouldn't commit murder to get one. That's the reason you killed Colonel Chernoff. Of course. I thought it was a very good reason. My dear Miss Joyce, I find your confidence in the police both flattering and disturbing. I should advise you to postpone your call until I'm ready for them. But I don't understand why this, it is that... perhaps, might eliminate any further confusion. Oh, I wish I'd known before that you were a detective. Only as a hobby. It's extremely diverting and sometimes, as in the present case, I find it possible to combine it with my profession, which is that of an importer. So my interest in a Chung Yuan scrolls is quite easy to understand, isn't it? Yes, I see now. Where did Madame Chernoff take the scroll? I don't know. But she telephoned someone whom she called Darling. Her lamentation for her husband seemed to have been of short duration. Did you hear the telephone number? I think it was 24521. Would you please connect me with Mr. Feng of the telephone company? I may have misunderstood that number. Mr. Feng, this is Mr. Moto speaking. Thank you very well. Could you please tell me whose telephone bears the number 24521? I'll wait. Very obliging gentleman, Mr. Feng, but submerged in an uninteresting occupation. Mr. Feng, yes? Oh, so. Thank you very much. I'm quite sure your hearing was not at fault. 23729, if you please. This might be rather urgent. May I speak to Prince Chang, if you please? Wu Yuang Shui Chang, Sen Sen. Shashi Chang, Ching Wang, Swaha. This is Prince Chang speaking. Ah, good evening, Mr. Moto. Please excuse me for calling at this hour, but I have reason to believe that an attempt will be made to steal your scrolls tonight. I shall take every precaution. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. You are quite welcome, Your Highness. Tsai Chen. Tsai Chen. You'll forgive my rather sudden departure. Where are you going? To the home of my friend, where I may be of some assistance. He's in danger. But you just spoke to him. Oh, no. I spoke to someone who pretended to be the prince, but whose knowledge of the Chinese language could be improved. Answer it, please. Hello? Oh, hello, Tom. Well, darling, I'm home. Just checking up on you. It might be wise to ask Mr. Tom to come over. Oh, Tom, Madame Chernoff has gone out. Maybe you better drop back here for a while. I'm a little nervous. Uh-huh, what did I tell you? I'll be right over. Au revoir. Do not neglect to lock the door securely after I go. <gasps> Don't try to call for help. Keep an eye on him. Scrolls must be hidden someplace else. We have searched every room. They're here somewhere. Moto phoned Chung to warn him, didn't he? But I tell you, it couldn't have been Moto you talked to. He's dead. I had to shoot him to get that scroll he brought back from the Gobi Desert. You thought you killed him before in Pereira's shop. I tell you, he tricked you. Well, how could he? He was standing as close as you are now. I killed him with his own gun. Which he very conveniently left for you to use, you stupid fool. I warned you not to underestimate Moto. If he's as clever as you think, perhaps your impersonation of Prince Chung didn't deceive him. Suppose he should send it for the police. I'll handle this. We're wasting time. Now then, where are those scrolls? Where are they?
Mr. Moto. Mr. Moto. Where's Eleanor? Eleanor. Eleanor. Now will you tell me? No. You'd better talk. Where are they? You'll never find them. What's happened? Where's Ellen? Is she... Isn't she here? No. The front door was open when I came in it. What are you doing here, anyway? Do you have a car? Yes. Why? Please take me to the house of Prince Chung at once. Prince Chung? What's that got to do with Eleanor? I suspect we will find her there. Please. You'll never find out that way. Chinese are stubborn swine. You could kill them before they'll talk. I'll give you one more chance. No. Untie his mother. Bring her in. Perhaps you'll change your mind. I told you to wait at the house. I brought Miss Joyce. She's out in the car tied up. You what? I had to do it. Moto came there and told her everything. Moto? Where is he now? He wouldn't bother us. After he telephoned Prince Chong, he realized that something was wrong and started over here. I stopped him. Good work. Put the girl in my car. We'll be leaving soon. Who was that? Ivan. You'd better wait outside with him. What's happened? Never mind. He'll explain. Oh, my son. I am proud of you. He refuses to tell where your scrolls are. Did you expect him to bring dishonor upon his family? Well, perhaps he'll talk to protect you. No! Stop! Oh, oh. Have no fear for me. Please! No! Stop! Don't! Please! He will never tell you. No! No! I warn you. Wait! <laughs> I'll tell! Do not speak. Well, where are they? Oh, well? Do not bring disgrace upon your ancestors. They are in the vault behind this shrine. My son. You knew she was after the scrolls. She's been dangerous ever since she came to the house, yet you bring her over here. We can't take her along. It'll only cause more trouble. Kirger doesn't seem to think so. Are they all there? We'll see. Now our scroll shows a certain pagoda. It fits in here somewhere. Wait, there's the Marco Polo Bridge. That's a start. Then that must be the second one, the river. Now we follow the river till we come to the pagoda on our scroll. Now the inscription on our scroll is a poem describing the view from the top terrace of the pagoda. It must be this mountain pass or that section of the Great Wall. That's Nankow Pass. I can recognize it. Let me have the scroll you took from Moto's room. Here it is. That makes seven. That's the complete set. Let's get started. Look out! Wait outside, the car's ready. Turn right at the next corner, please. 
Marco Polo Bridge. Go by way of the Tsai Homan Gate. I'm sorry. Where's Eleanor? Do you know? They've gone to the Marco Polo Bridge. They have all the scrolls. It's not too late to stop them. Hello. Hello, operator. They'll have to leave by one of the city gates. Operator. Operator. I'm afraid Herr Kerger has denied us the use of this instrument. Let's go after them. No! No! I'll get a doctor. He has no need for a doctor. I have put dishonor on the name of Chung. I have betrayed the secret of the tomb of Genghis Khan. The foreigners will rob it of its treasure. They will not find it, Your Highness. Who is there to stop them? They have all the scrolls. Even the seventh one. You did not tell me you possessed her. My very good friend, remember the words, birth is not a beginning. Death is not an end. I cannot face my ancestors. The hand of a friend may take up the fallen burden. Your worthy mother will be avenged. I swear it. And the tomb? Before the guards of your house, I promise that no one shall ever desecrate it. for him now. Only a prayer. Namu Ami Tabu. Let's go. Your papers, please. Right. We're driving out to Chitaizu for the weekend. Yes. Come on. I'm Mr. Moto, International Police. Yes, sir. Did the black limousine go through here recently? Just a few minutes ago. Call Lee Ching Hui, the Marshal of Peiping, and tell him that I've gone after that car. They'll probably hire a boat at the Marco Polo Bridge. Notify the river police at Ling Tau to be on the lookout. Yes, sir, Mr. Moto. Come on! If we only knew what kind of pagoda was on Chernoff's scroll. If we don't stop them before they leave the river, we'll never find Miss Joyce. We were too late once. Well, 
I've charted that junk over there. Take the girl inside the cabin and keep her out of sight, understand? You go boat side, come back for me. Chop, chop. Savvy? Hey, Savvy. Shall I go now? Yes, drive across the bridge and double back on another road. When you're sure you're not being followed, join me at Ling Tao. There's a car coming now. Slow down, Mr. Tom. The bridge is just ahead. If that's motor or the police, stop them. Chad, he may be useful to us. Both side. Come on in here with me. Never mind the car. Have you lost your mind? What are you going to do with them? Stop worrying, will you? Yvonne, tell the captain to keep midstream. Don't permit anyone to board us, understand? Yes, sir. Nelson's come out of it. Oh, hello, Nelson. You're lucky you're not at the bottom of the river with your friend Moto. You can't get away with this. Little left word at the gate for the police to follow you. I don't think they'll find us. The route we're taking hasn't been discovered for 600 years. You see, the artist who designed this picture map made certain that all the scrolls were needed to follow its instructions. We have the complete set. Mr. Kruger. Yes? The captain is having some trouble with his deckhands. What kind of trouble? They're frightened of something. Think the boat is haunted by some evil spirits. Well, get up and keep them quiet. We don't want the river police after us. Yes, sir. Tell him to shut up! No can do! Him she goes! Make plenty noise! Flight and bad spirit away! Are you crazy? There is no such thing as ghosts! There! Oh, I see him too! What's going on up there anyway? Oh, it's nothing. You heard Yvonne say they were superstitious. I'll go. Good evening, everybody. Oh, I should advise you not to shoot me, Mr. Kerger. You see, I have something that you desire very badly. The only thing I ever wanted from you was that scroll you brought from the Gobi Desert, and I've got that. I'm so sorry to disillusion you, but uh, the scroll that I permitted uh, poor Mr. Schneider to take from my room was only an imitation. Done by a modern and not too expert artist. You're lying. This is one time you won't talk your way out. If you shoot me, we shall both regret it, I assure you. Since the decision lies entirely with you, at least do both of us the favor of uh, examining uh, this scroll here through a magnifying glass. Don't believe him. This is just another one of his tricks. If it is, it'll be his last. Even an untrained eye would detect these uh, artificially frayed edges. Not to mention the fact that the original scroll has an entirely different design, which shows the exact location of the tomb itself. Where is the real scroll? Oh, do you think I'm so foolish as to tell you? The Mongolian you sent to kill me in the desert was sufficient warning that my scroll was in danger. I managed to deposit it in a place of uh, comparative safety. It wouldn't have been of much use to you if I'd pulled this trigger when you entered here. Now, exactly what do you want? I would hardly have gone to such trouble to reach you if I had believed you reward me with a bullet. You understand, my scroll is useless without yours, but likewise, your set has no value without mine. I should imagine a treasure of Genghis Khan is sufficient for all of us. Why should we share with you? You haven't even got the scroll with you. But I possess a most remarkable memory. May I borrow this uh, chart for a moment? 
I can reproduce the drawing exactly as it appears on the original scroll. What if we don't agree? I'm afraid you must agree. You see, your scrolls direct you only as far as the edge of the Gobi Desert. Oh, and the Gobi Desert is so vast. One could so easily wander around endlessly without finding a trace of the tomb. Unless uh, one knew the exact direction. Oh, you are disappointed? I was only amusing myself a little. However, I shall be happy to make a copy of the scroll, should we reach an understanding. Can't you see what he's doing? He's stalling for time. Nelson told you he'd notified the police. You're a fool to trust him. But my dear Madame Chernoff, it is always unwise to trust anyone. Even a lady of your suspicious nature can sometimes be deceived. What do you mean? I have no interest, of course, in Mr. Kerger's uh, sentimental attachments. But is it not strange that he should insist on encumbering your journey with uh, Miss Joyce? Eric, aren't you going to deny it? I brought her because she might prove useful if we have followed too closely. You should know that. I realize, of course, Herr Kerger, that you did not wish to disillusion Madame Chernoff until you had gained possession of the scroll her husband bought from Pereira. Eric, is this true? Of course it's true. I'm sorry, darling. I tried to go through with my part, but Mr. Moto spoiled everything. You see? What are you talking about where you're crazy? You might as well untie me now. Say, what is all this? Couldn't you see through it, Tom, the way I was using you to fool Madame Chernoff? So it's true. You didn't want me. It was only the scroll you were after you're all the time. You're Keep quiet. You lied to me, making me believe you loved Stop me. Stop it, will you? You can't shut me up. You made a fool of me long enough. Stop it. Dear Madame Chernoff, I'm so grateful for your suspicious nature. It is not the first time a woman's jealousy has been fatal to the man she loved. I do not think it will be necessary to bind Madame Chernoff. The police will meet us at Ling To, and until then, escape would be impossible. You almost believed me, didn't you? Oh, no, of course I... Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, well, everything's all right now. Mr. Moto, stop! Don't burn them! It is with extreme regret that I destroy these rare objects of art. But already these scrolls have caused trouble enough. But they're priceless. My father will pay well for them for his collection. He doesn't know anything about the treasure. No one will ever know their real significance. I do not doubt your sincerity, Miss Joyce. But as long as these scrolls remain, they'll be a constant temptation to unscrupulous persons. I must keep a promise I made. Well, there goes ten million dollars up in smoke. He's right, Tom. Nam Ami Tabu. Now my friend can face his ancestors without shame. 